So this is this is one of the standouts from the from the McKinnon collection um, in many many ways, uh, not least of which, as you've observed, uh, it is there is some color to look at here, whereas most of the work in the McKinnon collection, uh, and and surely most of the work uh, photographically created between the eighteen uh, forties and the and the you know, mid twentieth century is monochromatic. Uh, so. One of the ways to, to get color into a photograph in 1908, one of the very limited number of ways to get color into a photograph in 1908, when this was made by John D. Stephen of Aberdeen, was to hand color it. Uh, and that's exactly what we're seeing here is a hand colored gelatin silver print uh, photograph. So hand colored black and white photograph. Um, and uh, it is called the dawn of, of light and liberty. And so when you think about it, uh, everything in this photograph stacks up to that title. Uh, so what are we seeing? We're, we're seeing uh, the center of Aberdeen here. And as, as you've noted, the, the statue of William Wallace uh, as a representation of, of liberty and, and, uh, uh, and, and freedom and these milk boys out on their morning deliveries. And so we know it's morning, right? Because the title suggests it, dawn. Uh, the colors suggest the dawn or reiterate the, the dawn. Um, you know, we know that's the time when, when milk boys are out doing their, their morning deliveries or were out doing their morning deliveries. Um, and so it, it it's all there. And as it happens, uh, this was one of Murray McKinnon's favorite photographs in the collection, uh, as he articulated to me uh, the first time I visited him, uh, visited him, in fact, in Balmedi, which is just north of Aberdeen. So we talked a while about this, this photograph, and he was very sort of matter of fact about it, just sort of describing uh, what it depicted and you know, what he enjoyed about it. And so I asked him if he, if he knew where it was, because I wasn't terribly familiar with Aberdeen at that point. So uh, he gave me an indication where it was, and so I made a point of stopping through Aberdeen on my way home found the location, of course, the statue is, is still there. Um, much of the, the, the civic profile you see uh, on the horizon is still uh, there, still recognizable. Um, it's a bit busier <laughs> now than, than, than it appears to be in this photograph. But uh, what's interesting is, from the photographer's perspective, you are actually facing east. Mm. You're, you are, in fact, facing the sunrise. So there, there is a sort of factual aspect to this photograph. Otherwise, I, I, I get the sense that it's, it's very staged, this mm. image, right. uh, perhaps sort of stacking up to what the photographer intended, uh, you know, with, with that title, especially. So what's the suggestion here? Well, we've talked about what the statue represents, and William Wallace representing Liberty. Uh, he's standing there, not so much in the in the posture of a of a of a warrior or a soldier, but an orator. Yes, mm. sort of the Roman orator addressing addressing the people, as it were. Uh, well, who is he addressing in this photograph? Well, the only people present are these are these milk boys. So so he seems to be, in a sense, addressing them. And although we're, we're in this silhouette, we're actually looking at the back of the statue, we're looking at William Wallace from behind, that's, that's not terribly important. He could be facing, facing us for all we know. Mm -hmm. uh, but he's addressing these, these, these boys walking off into the dawn of a new day, uh, this is sort of, sort of the, an early point in their lives, you know, their young lives, and as they go off into the day, off into their lives, it's almost as if he's, he's uh, bestowing this sense of, of responsibility that comes along with liberty uh, on them. So there's, there's, there's very much a, a message here and, and very much uh, a sense of, of tapping a, a, an emotive uh, perhaps a little bit nostalgic, perhaps a little bit uh, patriotic place in the viewers. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think what's also interesting, I you know, you say so there's multiple, all these multiple layers you can you can read the story into it. You get a good title, and it just sort of echoes on multiple levels. I what I find interesting with a lot of these, I'll just open this with Photoshop a moment, is um, because of course we're now looking at this. This is a faded photo from a hundred years ago. And I sometimes wonder about the notion, I mean, you, you've done high resolution scans of these, but if I do something like, if I just take a levels here, and if I bring that up a bit and bring that down a little bit, suddenly we have a sense of more detail, sort of that the colors become very slightly richer and the, you know, there's maybe a little bit more detail out of this. And if, if I uh, select all, copy, paste right so i've got this now i put this onto um into raw filter i can then take this a, a step further i can up the exposure but maybe bring in a little bit more texture or clarity or something like that um and although unfortunately at this point what happens is it means that all the the noise and the, and the little flex and the bits that are peeled off also become more heightened and exaggerated um parts of the railing sort of start to come out a bit more. There's a little bit we can we're making out a bit more in detail of some of the buildings in the background. Um, so it's kind of it's interesting. We look at these old photos and we sort of see them. It's almost like that's the way they always were. And yet originally they might not have been as faded and soft. It could have been quite a bit richer and deeper in the way that they were done. That's true. Uh, in this instance, I think it's probably primarily the color that has changed. I mean, mm -hmm. it's essentially uh, you know, subject to the same kinds of um, environmental issues and sometimes uh, inherent vice that uh, you know the color in a painting or a colored pencil drawing would be subject to. Um, but what's interesting is uh, for comparison. In the McKinnon collection, we also have a version of this photograph that's not hand colored. Oh, right. It's okay. just the, the, the black and white uh, gelatin silver print. Uh, and and it looks like great. That. Right, yeah, if we so, remove the color like that, yeah. I suppose, or even, you know, with a... Um, yeah, so it's not dissimilar from that. Mm. Uh, I think perhaps with a bit more clarity to it, yeah. even. Um, a bit warmer in tone, as I as I recall. Yeah. Um, but it's an interesting comparison, mm -hmm. and so it, it's very clear that uh, for John D. Stephen, uh, he felt that uh, some color added to the narrative. Yes. As you were talking about earlier, in terms of you know creating a narrative with with the photographs. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's fun. I think what's also interesting with it, with this photo as well, and you, you can do it with some, when you've got a very specific place, as you say, you, what you did, you, you actually went there and took a look in person. And even if you can't go there in person, these days you have things like um, Google Maps. And let me just pull up this a moment and uh, go to Maps. And if we type in... Uh, Wallace statue Aberdeen. There we go. This will show us exactly where it is. And then of course, if we want, we can do the street, you know, we'll take a look from, from above and we can see that here, here, it, here it is. So what we can also do is that we can grab street view. We can grab our little man. And if this, as you say, they were facing east. If we plonk him about there somewhere, Oops, hold on, turn it around. There we go. There we have our William Wallace. Um, let's move forward one, maybe. Yeah, we've got our William Wallace. Now that church, steeple, is now tucked in behind all these buildings over here. The, the, the dome, which we had there, is now lost behind these buildings over here. We've got this bit of dome, which I presume, oh, sorry, wrong, wrong one there, there we go, is this curved building here, I'm guessing, it's probably this one here. So you've got some of these buildings are still there, but a lot of them have been built up around. And of course, if we go back to the overview, if we go back to the overview, 
you can now see, of course, we've got great big roads running through the middle of it. So we've got these little halls, and yeah, I suppose here there's that sort of tip around hall. Here's that church spire with all the, the buildings around it. So we are still able to see some of what was there, but also we can see just how much has changed in the meantime. 